Yes, I'm going to talk about a work I have been doing a couple of years with Matthias Bode. And it's not a very intensive field work, but uh, it's been uh, going on for four years. And, and we have been participating in the quantified self-group in Copenhagen. Um, and I have been interested in seeing in a longer time perspective what happens uh, when people start using self-tracking. Um, and today we have talked a lot about neoliberalism. And I guess a lot of what is happening quantifies self uh, really fits very well with what you talk about in neoliberal uh, theory. For instance, that people talk about being responsible for themselves, uh, taking their health in their own hands. Um, they want to manage themselves. Uh, but when you see it in a longer perspective, things become a bit more complex. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So we talk about optimization. And it's interesting because it's actually a term that the people use quite a lot. They talk all the time about that they want to optimize themselves. Um, and it's interesting, of course, because this self-tracking, it uh, goes into like a general tendency today, uh, where people talk a lot, lot about using technology to optimize themselves. Uh, so we could also talk about, for instance, medical enhancement, cosmetic surgery, different kinds of dietary fashions. Uh, and it also go into this trend that you could coin uh, optimization, uh, where people want to make most of their life. Uh, so it's optimization is used broadly to refer to modes of living and strategy of making the most of life on a physical, economic, social, mental, and spiritual level. What is interesting, of course, is uh, that this concept has a different history, because originally it didn't come from the human area, uh, but from computer science, public management, where it denotes the selection of a best element. Uh, but in recent years, the term has been popularized as has entered the microphysics of everyday life. Uh, and today, people increasingly talk about how to optimize their life, how to make most out of themselves. If we go to the literature, this tendency has been dis described by various scholars, for instance, Nicholas Rose work, and he introduced the term technology of optimization. And what he is arguing is uh, that today we have a lot of technology that we do not use because we want to cure disease necessarily, but we use them because we are interested in controlling uh, processes of the body and mind. So what is new is not so much the technology in itself, it's not the tracking in itself, but he argues that we have entered what he calls the age of biological control. So we as human beings accept much greater responsibility towards ourselves and towards our bodies. Uh, even though Emily Martin uh, never really used the term optimization, she also describes social processes that taps into the concept of optimization. For instance, she argues that as a consequence of the shrinking of social institutions, People increasingly come to speak of themselves as mini corporations, uh, as projects that must be invested in, nurtured, managed, and developed. Uh, what we are looking at in our work is how people, they bring the present into the future by using technologies. Uh, so they sort of intervene on their own life uh, by using self-tracking technologies. Um, I thought today that we would talk a lot about quantified self, but we haven't actually talked about it. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the groups. Uh, it originated in 2007, uh, where Kevin Kelly and Gary Wolf, um, they started what is called the quantified self movement with the motto self-knowledge through numbers. Uh, today, the network has more than 207 groups in over 35 countries. 
Uh, the Danish group of self-quantifiers started as a digital platform in May 2012, and I went to the first meeting. Um, the active participation in the group takes the form of participation in meeting, where the members share their experiences with technology. Among a preferred topic is the sharing of experience with testing new technology, the impact it has on everyday life and general well-being. Uh, today, uh, they're organizing the 14th meeting. There are, this, is, this is from today. There's more than 300 members, but a normal meeting, there are only between like 20 to 40 people participating. And there's a really like a small core group, uh, mostly people who work professional with software um, or with health. Uh, then there are normally a couple of students showing up, and then there are people who are tracking because they have a medical problem. I'm not going to talk specifically about these today because it's a bit of a different argument. So I'm mostly going to talk about the people who go to the meeting because they just find the topic interesting and they uh, want to explore themselves or try uh, to self-track. Okay. So... I have gone to participant, uh, I've done participant observation in meetings uh, for about four years. Um, and the meeting normally has the format, what is called show and tell. So there's three questions that all people have to go to. Firstly, what did you do? Secondly, how did you do it? And thirdly, what did you learn? I just want you to, to uh, show a small clip from one of the meetings. It's in Danish, so I know not all of you will understand, but just to that you get a sense of how they present themselves. Okay, and you might see me in the back. I had a bit longer hair, and it's very convenient to do this kind of data collection because this clip is on YouTube, so I didn't even have to take the note myself. I can just go to YouTube and find the meeting. Um, And he's talking very, very excited about an insight he got from tracking his uh, running pattern and weighing himself. So he wanted to lose weight, uh, and he went on a diet, and then he also started to run and to weigh himself. And then he looked at how the curve correlated each day. And then this clip, he shows the point where he runs so much uh, that his diet is actually having effect. So he shows this really, really exciting point on the graph where his weight start to fall. Uh, and to him, he says that this was a really fantastic moment because in that moment, it became fun being on a diet. This thing I've seen is so tangible, so concrete, that you can see yourself from the outside. Uh, it makes, for instance, such, such thing as losing weight much funnier. So in that phase, he was really positive and very uh, curious about self-tracking. So if we go to how the people who started uh, the quantify self formulate what it's all about, they say, the self is just our operation sensor, our consciousness, our moral compass. So if we want to act more efficiently in the world, we have effecti effectively in the world, we have to know ourselves better. So the idea is that if you want to improve as a human being, you have to identify an area where you want to improve, and then you have to quantify it. And if you can quantify it, you can improve it. Uh, of course, it's interesting to ask what kind of self is this actually? Um, so we have tried to explore this process, um, and 
in the work we did, an article we wrote two years ago, we came to the three first steps, where we firstly saw how people actually used the technology, how they started to have this visual uh, feedback, uh, where they could actually start to see themselves from outside. We also saw how a they started to experience the body in this process, and then we also saw how they related to uh, the data. Um, this winter I went back and I tracked some of the self-tracker we interviewed a couple of years ago, and this is completely new, so I've just been looking at the interviews last week. Uh, so this part of the pre presentation will be a bit of work in progress, because it's actually quite surprising to hear what they have uh, come to and how they use it today. So going back to the start, uh, so the first process is what we call enactment. So here we have a really, really positive uh, self-tracker and he says if you want a progressive life where you are moving constant, constantly, this is a way to do it. Of course it does not work for all of us, but for me personally it is difficult to sit down and think what do I want to change next year and then make some arbitrary goal? I need something concrete and something I can quantify. Then tracking becomes interesting. The group around is not as such very interesting. I'm more interested in goals and rules, frames and consequences. It is a tool, an anchor point, to write things down or register. That at least is my interest for the time being. But then he says, but that interest might also fade by time. Uh, so we see here that uh, in the start, at least this person is very positive. Uh, he believes that through tracking he can read and see himself. Um, so here you can really see what we have talked about today, the kind of datafied other that emerges. So he sees himself in the data. Um, the aim is to get insights into the self, is also to identify blind angles, uh, to know what you are really doing. For instance, you think that you eat quite healthily, but if you take a photograph of everything you eat and upload it on eatery, you might find out that you have a bit of a distorted deception of how healthy you actually eat. So it's very much about I uh, documenting the, yourself and your own practices. So what is tracked? Um, a lot of things are tracked. Um, in the self-tracking um, movement or group in Denmark, I heard about a lot of things. Uh, weight, food, sleep, uh, calories, steps, uh, there are also some mother there, and they track, for instance, how many times they breastfeed. Uh, they also track how many times they have changed the diaper. Um, but what is interesting is that what people track seems to change by time. Um, so to go back to the process of tracking. So for most people, it starts with the use of one app. It could, for instance, be in sleep circle. And then they see the self uh, visualized in the curves. Uh, so for instance, this is a picture of the quality of sleep of one night. Um, then they start to correlate it with other data. So for these people, it's not so much the data themselves. They're a bit more advanced because they want to correlate different data sets. So for instance, how is my sleep related to, for instance, my well-being, my cognitive performance, uh, my productivi productivity? Um, and then they look at this data and then they uh, get a better insight of themselves. Uh, in the article we wrote a couple of years ago, we called it this the digital doppelganger. So we saw this relationship between uh, the data and the self, and how they established this kind of dialogue um, and increasingly got to what they call know themselves better. Uh, so, in this 
part is very much about uh, experiencing yourself through the data. Uh, for instance, one say generally these are things that you already know, but it gives you something to have it measured objectively. You are then confronted with it in the visualization. It gives a kind of insight or at least a feeling of aha, and then you can act from this. It might not be a surprise that it took you from 30 to 45 minutes to fall asleep, but wow, now it's in the document and on the screen. Uh, so they increasingly get to know themselves better. Um, so for many of the informant, it was a comparable to initiate a process of self-discovering, uh, to see the correlation between different data sets. Uh, Meta, a self-tracker on 39, talks about how it affects the senses. Uh, according to her, in normal everyday life, people tend to see things very black and white and let the mood affect how they respond to the world. Um, this also somehow affects or distorts the perception of who they really are. So people act according to an image they have of themselves. Tracking, according to her, means becoming conscious of who she really is. So it's all about making check, uh, ask yourself, how am I doing? And then let the data speak. Uh, so she talks about that gradually uh, it's possible to merge the two track. So looking at the data set and your normal self, you can be much more conscious of who you really are. Uh, some talk about that it gives a better overview. Uh, another person also talk about that is sort of having a kind of encyclopedia of the self. So it's all there. You have the history of yourself. Uh, but what is interesting is that um, increasingly, uh, when I've seen people track for a longer time, there start to be some sort of entanglement. Um, so in a way, you can say that, that the technology somehow enters into a dialogue with the human side, uh, and they start to have some sort of like almost like a dialogue. Firstly, what is interesting is that people talk about that when they start to track, they get much more aware of the body. So they start to sense the body much more. Like Jon, we just saw, he talked about after tracking. Uh, for instance, if he uh, was eating, he really tasted the thing. So he felt like his, generally his senses, they were much more active. And that came as a bit of a surprise for me. Uh, so it's very much about raising the bodily sensitivity and awareness. But it's also interesting but, uh, because at one point they also talk about that they start having a conflict or tension between the two self. Um, for instance, what they're tracking, is it actually something that, they, that relates to what they want to be or become? For instance, we had a person who tracked time because he wanted to be much more productive. Uh, and then he found out that being productive didn't really make him happier. Uh, he felt that it didn't give him any life quality. So it didn't really align with his general goal. So he sort of changed his goal. Another thing they're also asking about is whether they have become a number junkie. Because in order for this to work and to get this story of the self, this encyclopedia, you have to do it every day. Because if you miss a day, you can make the graph. So they somehow become very like dependent on tracking every day. Um, another thing they also start to discuss is how it, it actually um, influences experience. So how is it, for instance, running in your own thought, seeing nature, and then having the app? How does it change the experience? Uh, another guy used... Um, uh, and uh, technology uh, when he was meditating. So he was all the time checking his uh, pulse to see if he was really relaxed, to see if the meditation was effectful. But then he found out that the whole idea about meditation was like being in the now and just like forgetting about things on the outside. So it was actually destroying the meditation experience. 
so they start increasingly having this kind of uh, dialogue between what the data do to them and what they actually want to do with themselves and their human value. And now we are coming to my latest work, and that uh, I started in this Christmas. So uh, now I'm trying to track the self-tracker I interviewed. Uh, and not all of them have been interested in uh, talking to me. This is an email from, from uh, Jon that you saw in the first presentation, who was showing very excited about when he started, actually started to work. And he writes me, dear daughter, I would like to help, but I have not much to tell you. Currently, I'm in a sort of tracking limbo. My variables stop functioning, and I'm waiting for the newest Apple iWatch. I still weigh myself every morning, but I do not use the data actively. They have sort of slided into the background as a kind of personal data patchwork I can return to if needed. I still use my telephone and apps while running, but I do not really pay attention to the data I collect. They are just there. Uh, so increasingly we see somehow that where we saw before that people like really get into using the technology, they feel that they get to know, uh, that comes sort of, sort of tension and increasingly a kind of separation from the technology. And there are a lot of things that they talk about. And this is from the four people I have interviewed so far. And they all talk about similar experience. Firstly, they talk about the time that you use so much time. So if you really want to self-track and you want to get something out of it, you have to use and invest so much time. Uh, secondly, they talk about the data overload. What to do with all this number? And here uh, I have a quote from one who said, how much did I actually get out of carrying that device? I had to charge it, look after it. It was a fun thing to talk about, to meet other people, uh, entertain the experience about tracking. But I had to realize that I didn't, did not really look at the numbers. Rather, it had become a burden. Uh, so they're talking a lot about what to actually do with all these numbers, all this data. How can they actually make sense of it? Uh, uh, Many of them got like a moment of revelation, for instance, when Jon, he was tracking, and they feel that it really helped them, but then they haven't invented themselves again. So it's like some sort of uh, aspect they got to know of themselves, and now they really are not really into finding more things to track. Um, so they also talks about that it reduced the experience, uh, that it became like almost like an obsession, and what a lot of them talks about that it restricts activities. Uh, for instance, a guy, he used variable, uh, but he wanted to do things with his kids. And his uh, son, he liked to swim, and he couldn't swim with it. Uh, his son also likes to do dance, and he couldn't uh, like to do martial arts, and you cannot wear um, these kind of things when you're doing martial arts. So uh, he felt that there was a lot of things he couldn't do when he was tracking. So he actually gave up tracking when he was spending time with his son. Um, yeah, so this is why I just took the picture of the Janus head, because when I talked to, like, for instance, Jon in 2013, he was very much oriented towards the future about optimizing, losing weight, getting knowledge. Uh, and then when I talk to him, uh, the thing has like just uh, lost its significance, or there were more like some sort of background. Uh, so the technology was not foreground anymore, it was background. Uh, but when I asked them, but did you then just waste your time? Uh, the, the people I talked to, they said, no, in no way. Because this was actually a process that was needed to get to know themselves. So like a guy here, Jan, he says, it's a process where data plays a part. Before I started tracking, I had a rather vague sense of whether my idea about myself did correspond to reality. By using data, you can adjust your attention and eradicate some prejudice about yourself. But I think optimization of data gives a rather limited additional information to what we already know about ourselves. But it helps us to start looking at ourselves. But in the end, we do not really need the data to find the answers. Uh, so 
for instance, in this case, he talks very much as, as tracking as some sort of process or a phase that serves to calibrate knowledge about oneself. Um, what is also interesting that the people I talk to now, they all talk about that they have moved from optimizing heart value, for instance, as uh, performing better, running faster, uh, losing ways to more soft value. For instance, optimizing things that you cannot quantify, uh, being a good partner, having a, a, a good social life. So increasingly, they, they become conscious about that what they really give them satisf satisfaction, assuming being was more like human value and not so much being productive. So you can say there's a move from productivity, efficiency, to uh, more focus on life quality and well-being. So just to sum up, um, before I was in a session on neoliberalism, but it now it changed the title. But I think it could be interesting to take this case and and discuss neoliberal values, because on the one hand, I can, I think that this is really a good illustration of neoliberal values uh, that they somehow conform. But in the other one, there's also a complete tension with neoliberal values. Uh, so it's not really tracking, at least for the people I talk to, it's not really something that is a value in itself. Uh, it's more something that you do to get to know yourself. They talk about calibrating the self, uh, getting to know themselves, uh, modeling themselves. Uh, so it has some sort of like fluid quality, you could say. Um, but it's not something that they wouldn't have done. They think that it has been really great and it has been a really, really uh, useful experience. Um, and I, of course, have to mention that a lot of them still track, but it's not on the, it's much more in the background. Okay. Um, yes, I think that is all. Yeah, thank you.